Hi, welcome back to Make It With Tim. If this is your first time with us, then welcome. Now I love doing DIY around the house and if you do too, and you want to follow along with the projects that I'm doing around our house, then click that subscribe button below so you don't miss any videos in the future. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I put on skirting board, both onto stud walling and onto masonry. Let's get going. I've been putting skirting board on around our living room. I've now come to a corner where I've got both a masonry wall and a plasterboard wall and an internal joint and an external joint to show you. So I'm going to be able to show you how to do a scribe joint on the internal and then I'm going to show you how to get exactly the right angle on the external mitre joint. Right, first things first, I need to find the length of my skirting board. So I go ahead and I mark up my skirting board. I've tipped my mitre saw over to 45 degrees, allowing me to cut a 45 degrees angle to match the skirting board that I already have on the wall. Now, in my understanding, the reason you do this is because wood expands and contracts and it just gives it a little bit of space to, uh, to move as it swells and shrinks. So I've managed to get the skirting board in place, joined up to the other skirting board. I put glue on this joint before putting it in. And before putting it in, I've also drilled these countersink holes. Now, the holes in here are six millimeters big, which means I can get my raw plug through there. They're gonna go in and they'll go right through to the wall in just a minute. Before we do that, I need to drill the holes into the masonry. So I have myself a six millimeter drill bit and the screws I'm using uh, use up most of the length of the drill bit. So that's why I haven't marked the depth. I know that I need to go pretty much the whole way in. To fix the skirting board, to the masonry wall, I put the raw plug in, then lightly attach a screw. I then hammer the raw plug into the wall until I feel it stop. I then know that the raw plug is in the masonry wall and I can put the screw in and it will hold the skirting board tight to the wall. Right, to make this end match beautifully into this skirting board that we've just put on, it's easier if I take the skirting board, lay it on its front, and then on the back here is where I'm going to do all my marking out. That way, if I am using a skirting board that is very fancy, with lots of curves and dips, it, the back is nice and flat, so it makes life a lot easier to draw it out. I get my skirting board. I put it on, make sure that it's flush against the end here, and then I just draw on my skirting board outline. Now, this is a bit more complicated because I have to allow for the pipe work. So I'm gonna to have to make a cutout in the top corner here to get round the pipe work. To do that, I then continued on the line at the flat face of my skirting board, as you can see here. The distance between this face of the skirting board and this face of the pipework is 8 millimeters. This is the face of the skirting board and I've drawn a line up to see where it follows through because my skirting board actually follows around like that. And then I've added 8 millimeters on to here. So this is where the pipework gets to. The last thing I need to check is where the pipework comes down to against my skirting board. So now I've got the mark, I'm going to transfer it round to the back. This is the line that I transferred round. 
So my pipe comes to here. I've transferred it onto the back. And then it joins up to the other mark just here. And I've made a little curve here for the pipe. I've marked out where I need to cut on the back of the skirting board. To do this job, I'm going to use a coping saw. I can also use an electric jigsaw if I need to, or if I want to, but I'm going to stick with this. The great thing about the coping saw is that by loosening the handle, you can then alter the angle of the blade, which means that the support for the blade doesn't get in the way of you cutting whatever angle or curve that you need to cut. When you're cutting, just be very aware of what angle your blade is at, and then make sure that as you get towards the end of the cut, you support the piece so it doesn't break off. There we go, all beautifully cut out. Let's see if it fits. Okay, so that's not a bad fit. There's a very, very slight gap all the way around. Now, not every corner in your house is a perfect 90 degrees. So with this corner, if I needed to change the angle, I could either sand down this front edge if the angle is less than 90 degrees, or sand down this back edge if the angle of the corner was greater than 90 degrees. And that way, the joint would do this, and I would get it nice and flush. Before sticking this in, I'm just gonna sand down here very, very slightly, just to make it a nicer fit. So I've shown you one way to do an internal joint. Now, that's my least favorite way. What I'm about to show you here is how I prefer to do my joints. I'm gonna show you on an external mitre joint, but the same principle applies for an internal one. So you could do this method for the corner I've just shown you over there. I've got my skirting board in place. I take a pencil and I mark the corner of the wall where it's gonna be. I then get my sliding bevel and I set it to the angle of the wall. So, I need to find half of this angle. Let me show you how I do it. I take the angle that I've just set and a scrap piece of wood. I put this edge up against the flat parallel side and I draw on the angle that I've just measured. I then take a protractor and I mark off a length. It doesn't matter what length that is as long as it's exactly the same here and here. I then take my protractor and place it where the two lines cross and draw another mark. I then put the protractor into the other original mark, draw my second semicircle where those two lines cross. I now need to draw a line between there and the original point where I started all of this. This angle here is exactly the same as this angle here. So this angle is the angle that I need to set my mitre saw up to get a perfect mitre joint on the skirting board. To set the angle on my mitre saw, I make sure that I put the side of the wood that I took all the angle measurements from against the mitre fence. I then line my blade up with the line that I've drawn and cut. Next I put my mitre back to 90 degrees 
and then tip the blade over to match the angle that I had just cut on that piece of wood. I do this because the blade on my skirting board isn't large enough for me to stand my skirting board upright and cut the angle. So I lie my skirting board flat and cut the angle instead. I then repeat the process for the other piece of skirting board that's going to join, making sure that the angle is cut in the other direction. I also have a video on laying laminate beading that follows a very similar process to this, and if you're interested, I'll put a link up top. Finally, I then cut the second piece of skirting board to length. As you can see, the pieces go together really neatly and it gives a beautiful corner. I've checked where my studs are on this wall with my device. I now need to mark up on my skirting board where I'm going to pre-drill my holes so that I can sink the screw into my skirting board and then into the wall. To make the holes for my screws, I'm going to use this countersink bit with a drill bit attached. So I've got three in here and one in my little one to drill. A little tip, if you're going to do your countersink pre-drilling inside, get yourself a couple of scrap bits of wood, put them underneath your skirting board, and that way when you drill, there's no risk of you going into the flooring. To stick my skirting board to the plasterboard wall, I'm going to use no more nails. Now, all you actually need is an expanding glue of some sort that says it's good for sticking skirting boards on. Make sure it's on, evenly spread. You also want to use a wood glue at the ends of your skirting board where it joins. Then you get your screws and you fix it to the wall. Time for the last little piece. And then we can put it into place. So there you have it. An external mitre joint cut. This is definitely not a 90 degree angle, so these are definitely not 45 degree joints, but as you can see, they fit beautifully flush together. The mitre joint is my preferred way of joining skirting boards together. I prefer not to do the scribing, but if you try them for yourself, you'll find out which one you prefer, and you might find that different methods suit different situations. Give it a try, and let me know which one you prefer. To do the corking, I'm just gonna use some very simple white corking. I'm going to run it along the top here in one continuous bead and then I'm going to smooth it off with a bit of water and my finger. I'm just using a generic wood filler here. Now I'm going to be painting over the top of this so the fact that my wood filler is a pale cream isn't going to be a problem. Now, one thing to remember when using polyfiller or wood filler, you need to overfill the hole that you're filling because as it dries, it's gonna shrink very slightly and that way you can then sand it down to the, exactly the right level rather than getting it flush at this point and it's shrinking and creating a little dip and then you'll need to go back and put some more in instead of painting it. So. My skirting boards are all on, and now I just need to wait for the polyfiller to dry so that I can sand them down and get them ready for painting. The next day, once the wood filler is dry, it's time to sand everything back. I tend to start with a rougher sandpaper of about 80 to 100 grit, and then use a finer sandpaper of about 180 to finish off the sanding. I've shown you how I go about doing both a mitre joint and a scribe joint, and how I attach skirting board to both a masonry wall and a plasterboard wall. I hope that this has been really helpful for you, seeing how I do these jobs, 
and giving you some things to think about. If you've enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you click that subscribe button below, it's a massive help to my channel. And leave me a comment about how you get on with your skirting boards as well. Any funny stories or success stories or anything actually, it'd be interesting to hear how you do. So until then, take care and God bless.